change everything to make it work. That's okay. Okay. Whew. All right, Juan. Juan, cue the music. Let's do this. Warning, the Catholic Man Show contains high levels of manliness. It's simple, really. You either want to grow in virtue and holiness, or you want to be a sissy, whiny baby. If you choose to move forward, grab your whiskey glass, because the Catholic Man Show is starting right now. Welcome to the Catholic Man Show. We're on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. Adam Minahan here sitting with David Niles in Studio One on the buttons in his new shirt. Producer shirt. Looking great. He has his producer hat on, his producer shirt. We'll take a picture and throw it up on our social media. Yeah, he's looking good. He's looking good. Uh, Dave, how's your lungs? Great. They're working well? Just so good. Really? In and out. Like they're supposed to. Right on cue. Yeah. It really is great. Good. No punctures, no holes. No holes. I'm just I'm just regular Dave again. It's good, good to have you back. Yeah, it's good to be back. That way you can also smoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I took I you know I, I took some I took some time off. Not that I sm I don't smoke very much anyway. Right. You know. Neither do I. It's it's only on occasion. Right, that I do, but uh, I, I felt wise and prudent. There was a couple days when everyone else was, and I wasn't. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gave it a couple weeks after I got better. J you know, like a little insurance policy, sure, just in case. Yeah, no need to rush do anything it. rash. Right. So, but here you are. Here we are, Eche Homo. Yes. What a crazy week this has been. Totally crazy. Yeah, in fact, we're going to be talking about some of the craziness today on the episode. Hey, before we do that, can you uh, can we can we pour some of this whiskey? Yes, because I'm so. We've been trying to get this excited. all of our equipment working and just been staring um, and at staring it, staring at this whiskey for a little while. So we're having Goalie Town Double Barrel uh, Single Malt Whiskey. It's out of Kansas City. Goalie Town, believe it or not, was oh, it's out of Kansas City. Yeah. Okay. It, I thought Actually, it was an, I was reading it. I thought it was Irish, but I guess it's just in the spirit of an Irish whiskey. So turns out Gully Town was the name of Kansas City before it was Kansas City. What? Yeah, they called it Gully Town. It's always interesting how a town can like change its name, you know? Well, this one did. Um, and so it was Gully Town became Kansas City. And so that's why they named it Gully Town. Um, what, what is the... I forget what the uh, it starts with R. What distillery it is? Can you? Um, Restless Spirits. Restless Spirits Distillery. And so I'm really excited about it though because it's. Oh, I have the uh, the tasting notes right here. I'll give them to you. It's a nice color. Yeah. It's, so it's double barreled. So they they first uh, age it in new charred oak, mm -hmm. and then they have uh, just oak bourbon barrel casks mm, it smells really good does it yeah i'm interested to see how it is because i think that they only uh, they they age it only for about uh two years a little over two years oh no kidding so i'm interested to see how okay uh so the official nose is maple dark cherries mm -hmm. and then the taste is a smoky uh butterscotch malt and burnt sugar delight on the palate and a savory finish with hints of vanilla so, a lot of time, it's about ABV, 46%, 46% ABV, mm -hmm. single malt. Yeah, it's aged two years. Um, you can tell it, it's got a, more of a bite to it. I kind of like it. It's a little it. stronger. Yeah, it's got... Alcohol bite. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, it doesn't have that mellow, smooth... It doesn't, it's not just going to go down real easy, you know, that you get from an, uh, an older whiskey. I still really like it. What was, how much did it cost? I think it was about 42, 45 hmm, bucks. Really? Okay. That's kind of, exp for me, I would expect a two-year-old whiskey to be a lot cheaper. You know what I mean? 
like in the 20, 20 range. Right. Even if it is good. I wanted to give it a shot. Sure. I, but I do. I really like the smell. It, it's very it's very aromatic. Yeah, a lot of the maple and cherries, just like you said. Well, I think some caramel. The the sweetness of it uh, helps, I think, temper the bite. Yeah, because there's definitely a bite. Sure. I kind of like a bite though. I like to mix it up every now and then. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't. If you're just drinking great whiskey that just is so smooth all the time, like. That's why you like to go to rye whiskey every once in a while. Right, yeah. You get an aggress Put a little aggressive. Put ha hair on your chest. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Dave, why do we why do we drink on air? We haven't said this in a little That's bit. That's a good question. You know, uh, it's a good, yeah, because we haven't talked about this in a while. The thing is, God made the things of this earth good, and they should be enjoyed for their goodness. And whiskey is so good. And so that's what we want to do. We would we want to enjoy, enjoy it in moderation. We always drink in moderation on the show. Of course, everything we do here on the Catholic Man Show is about promoting virtue. And what better way to promote virtue than to exemplify it? Um, so, we we want to have a, a good holy leisure, and that's especially important with what we're going to be talking about See today. How I teed it up for you there. That was nice. I was hoping that you'd catch on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we are actually made for leisure. We're made for rest. Mm -hmm. Here in America, we have we've adopted this mentality that we rest so that we can work again. It was just like almost like we're charging up our batteries so we can go back to work and that's not right we're working so that we can have time to rest right that's why like we work while we're here on this earth mm -hmm. so that way we reach our heavenly reward we right. rest in god rest in him that's right so the work is to be done here and the and, laborers are few so, so and the bible says right and so doing all of the work throughout the day and throughout the week is pointless if you don't know how to rest. If you don't know how to have leisure, then your whole life is a waste. You're just well, wasting it all. And I think a lot of people are realizing right now how much they don't know how to rest. Yeah. How much, you know, they're having a lot of opportunity for leisure, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of binging of Netflix going on right, right. now. Yeah, which is not true. That's not, I mean, you could, there are some good shows in the world that you could enjoy in moderation. Right. But the very fact was, that you would call it binging on an ep, like, oh, I was net binging on a show, like, right. that means it's not in moderation. I was thinking about this actually last night, laying in bed, how John Sr. calls the TV intrinsically evil. He makes a case that the, t the do you, television do, is- He calls it intrinsically, intrinsically evil. evil. Do you think he makes the case well? Does he, does he prove the case? Well, so- Because that is interesting. It, he, he, makes, he makes the case- Seems like a tough thing to do. I thought when I was re it's like when you're reading the book, you're like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh -huh. and, yeah. But you don't sit. You, you kind of get carried away. I, with di I didn't like meditate on it. And then I started thinking about like, well, that it's just bad metaphysics. It's not intrinsically evil. Uh, right. I, I, it, can, it can't be intrinsically evil. Right. Um, but anyway, even, so even the birth control pill is not intrinsically evil. The pill itself, birth control Contraceptive. Contraception right. is intrinsically evil. Right. Um, but not the birth control pill isn't intrinsically evil. Well, then it, it led to my, my thought process led to I realized that the more something is made for its goodness, the more it's typically perverted. Mm hmm. And, you know, so like, you know, our, even like our sexual organs, there's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a good thing. But how right. much is it? Yeah, the is more it, it gets perverted? misused. Yeah. The more it gets misused. You know, food is a good thing. It gives us nourishment. It gives us, you know, uh, the ability to work so that we may rest. Mm -hmm. But how much uh, are we gluttons? You know, how much do we abuse food, waste food? Right. Uh, you know, drink, you know, enjoying a nice drink. Uh, in fact, on this label, on Gully Town, it says whether you are meeting, uh, whether there's a meeting place around a barrel, a chessboard, a, or a campfire, enjoy it with friends. I thought that was kind of cool. So I mean, like yeah. even drink can be is a good thing, but it can be misused. And how much uh, has it been misused? You know, with alcoholics and and things like that, or just in general, just you know, drinking too much in excess. Mm -hmm. But the more something is good, uh, the more it, it more can likely be it is to be misused. Yeah, misused. I agree. I agree. And that's what I was thinking about about uh, eleven forty-five last night, laying in bed. Nice. I was not thinking about that at 
Actually, I wasn't in bed by 11.45, so... You texted me at like 1.30 in the morning. That's when I was going to bed. It was 1.30 in the morning. You, you jerk. Don't text me at 1.30 in the morning. Actually, my phone's silent, so I didn't, yeah. I didn't catch it. But uh, one other thing that's interesting about the study -o, you know, so I told you last week when I went on just a, a kick, but I said this was the first of three stages of the study -o being renovated. We got the black walls. We got we kind of got a new theme going, but also as you can see, Dave is smoking in the studio, which Margot was very worried about since with your lungs. But we talked my wife. I'm a sales guy by trade, and I was able to talk my wife into letting us buy these Rabbit Air air filters uh, that are going to be filtering out our smoke in this room, and so we're able to smoke our pipes in the studio now, which will be a nice addition, but we'll see how it goes. I don't know how many, I don't know how well, it, when we tried it we'll out, see. we'll see when we tried it out first, we spoke to cigar. We both smoked cigars two smoke. in here. Yeah. And two big two, cigars. And that was, was two cigar smoky. smoke and pipe smoke. So different. Right. What, what are we so different? Oh, uh, this is a little Marlin flake. So, uh, it's actually in a flake. It's really good. I really like this. Uh, it's by Rat Rays. Okay. I think they might have gone out of business. I don't know. Oh, so this is antique. I don't know. So it comes in like a roll. I don't know if you can see this. They cannot on our podcast. But see, it comes in like a big... Wait, it almost looks like a big strip of beef jerky. Right. And you just break it off and... Put it in there. It's delicious. It's a good, fl good flavor. It yes. is a good flavor. Yeah. And it's aromatic, so it smells. It makes the room smell nice. Yeah. I think these, these flakes like this also hold their moisture longer, so they don't get dried out as easy. Nice. So we're talking about rest today, so when we get back, we're going to jump into a man gear on work. Throw a curveball at you. Irony. We'll be right back. Well, you gotta go to the video, the live video. You gotta go to the video. Mario, make sure you tell Michael Knowles that video. we are now smoking in the studio, so hopefully he would be more ap more interested in maybe coming to Tulsa. That'd be awesome. Am I wearing a name tag? No, this is just a Columbia shirt. And it has one of these. These little tags on it, the Columbia tag. <laughs> Wouldn't that be just, funny? Just, just to case. wear a name tag, like everywhere you went? Just in case. Just Hi. Keep... You know, like one of those that says, Hi, I'm, and you write your name. Yeah. That way, like, people would just be like, Hey, Dave. Hey, David. Hey, Adam. Hey, Adam. What's up? Because every now and then you'll see somebody on the street in the store who clearly forgot they had a name tag on. I like to take advantage of those moments and be like, hey, Jeff, how's it going, man? And th they'll look at you because they've totally forgotten that they're wearing a name tag. Mm -hmm. It works every time. They give you this look like, do I know you? And you just kind of like walk away and they'll, it's the best. Okay. Next time you see it, just like passing remark as you walk by the guy, be like, hey, Karen. Sup. Have a, hey. Sup, Karen. Good to see you, Karen. All right, let's keep going. Did you turn the light off on this one? No. It just did that itself? Yeah, it must have. Huh. Oh, that, that's sideways. Is it still pumping out air? Yeah. That's big. It was really going somewhere. I would hate to stop it. Juan's getting a little smart. Juan's getting a little smart on we us. We will send you back to Venezuela. <laughs> now is not the time, Juan. told you don't do that. I was doing it on purpose. I like it. Father John O'Neill.
Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan and Juan Posada. And Juan Posada on the buttons. We're drinking. We're drinking. We're drinking Gully Town. Uh, product of Kansas City. A two-year-old whiskey. Double barrel. It's a double barrel, right. So the two barrels are, I don't know if you mentioned this, there's a new charred oak barrel. Barrel number one. Barrel number two is an oak bourbon cask. So that's what they do. I don't know if they split the time 50-50. They don't. Six months the first one, 18 months the second. Six and then 18. Gotcha. Yep. So there you go. That's the secret recipe for a two-year-old whiskey. It's good. It, you can tell it's two-year-old whiskey, but it's still very good. It's it's not. It's very drinkable. You know, it, it's not a lot of two-year-old whiskeys. You don't really want to drink. You know, that's you, true. You'll taste it and say, Ugh, in "That's fact, not something fact, I want to drink." That I was of. trying to age myself in the Catholic Man Show little whiskey barrel that, that I got. Yeah. I was hoping I had some moonshine, some homemade moonshine that I put in there, and I was hoping like maybe maybe this will be a good whiskey to to have in a couple of years. Well, turns out that my one of my kids accidentally, or maybe on purpose, I'm not sure, uh, opened it up, and all of the moonshine that was aging poured out, and it ate the finish off of our credenza. Is it, that a credenza or buffet table? Maybe I think that's a buffet. Buffet I don't really know the difference, it to be ate, honest. It ate it, the finish right off. Right off like, of it. It's not just, oh, some it's of it's It's a discoloration. Gone. It's gone. Yeah, it's, like, it is gone. Like so that is wood my, underneath. Uh, my wife was not too happy about that. But and it's very, it's not like an And I wasn't either, area. to be honest. It's not a faded area. It's like, this is the spot. This is the spot where the, wa- where the uh, moonshine stark is. stark contrast, yeah. Yeah, so. Okay, so. Fun. Hey, before we get into it, though, let's talk okay. about the Glencairn glasses. We haven't done that in a long time. Yeah, check out these Glencairn glasses. So we're glasses. drinking our, our whiskey today in a Catholic Man Show Glencairn glass. It is a Glencairn glasses are specifically made for whiskey, uh, specifically Scotch whiskey, but I don't know which one. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> I don't know which camera it is. Anyway, uh, and you get one for free as a thank you gift for signing up on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash the Catholic Man Show. And if you are a $10 or more subscriber, we send you one within the first month. We'll send it to you basically on week four because here's what happens. Some people will sign up and, and then cancel, and we've already sent one out. And we lose money the first month when you sign up because buying these glasses and shipping them are a little bit more than $10. Costs more than $10, right. So we lose money the first time. So don't expect the glass immediately, but within about four but we'll send it to you. Four Jim, to five weeks. Jim is on it. Jim is on it. He's so, going to get it to so you. Don't worry don't, about it. Don't worry. Okay, now we can get into the gear. So, yeah, but we haven't talked about the glasses in forever, and they're laser etched. Laser etched, our with logo. Lasers, right? Laser etched with lasers. That's typically how you do laser etched. Not always. I, look, I don't presume to know. Okay. 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 <laughs> but sometimes you use other things when you're laser etching, uh, but like other things, I don't know. Uh, but these are dishwasher safe. These glasses, right. you can put them in the dishwasher top rack. I don't know why it matters in the dishwasher. The bottom rack is apparently a much more violent place. You can only put you can only put sturdy <laughs> you can only put sturdy stuff down there. The top rack is fine. It's the kiddie pool. The bottom rack, not so much. Okay, that's where stuff gets real on the bottom rack. <laughs> so on our show, we typically for the new listeners, we typically. Uh, open a, a drink and enjoy it, and then we highlight some kind of gear of some sort. Uh, gear that every guy should either want, need, have, desire. Um, sometimes they're practical, sometimes they're not. And then we, we jump into a topic, so the second half of our show is, is the topic. But They're always practical. Flamethrowers have plenty of practical use. Okay. You knew that's where I, I was I know going. what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so, Dave, this is your topic. This is your your segment with uh, the gear. So I'll let you discuss the power drill. Yeah, so man gear today is a power drill. This is uh, an essential item in the garage of every man. Especially a uh, wireless, what do you call, a battery operated power drill. Cordless. cordless. That is the word. I was searching for it. And I found it when you said it. So cordless I, power drill. So I went ahead and got my cordless Let's power drill. Show them yours. 
Here's Adam's cordless power drill. It works really well. The batteries last as long as you do. Yeah, until you can no longer... Because you are yeah. the battery. I have actually used one of these. My grandfather's shop at our cabin in Michigan, he had one that had... When I found it, it had a drill bit in it. You know, he had clearly been using it. Oh, really? Yeah. And it works just fine. Yeah, this one works great. This one was actually out of... Um... Haley's grandfather, who's passed away, Dale Kitchell, uh, uh -huh. at Meemaw's. Yeah. It, it was in Meemaw's garage, and uh, Haley was like, hey, Adam would really like this for his garage at some point to hang up, because I like it. I like, I'm a sucker for antique tools. I like cast iron. I like yeah. uh, antique tools, and Meemaw was kind enough to say he can go ahead and have it. So this was, uh, this has been around for a long time. Uh, oh yeah, for I guess I gotta a, for a podcast and radio listeners. All right, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna showcase, and you explain it. This is a hand drill. So you hold it on top with one hand, and then the the next hand on bottom, you swing it or you like spin it around, and it's kind of U shaped. Yeah. So that creates the the Just, dr the drilling action. You can go to Facebook or YouTube page to. It's a hand drill. It's, it's a hand, hand drill. Hand drill. Hand drill. Okay, but that's not what we're actually going to talk that, about. That and it is cordless. If you if you notice, there are no cords right on that hand drill. Correct, which was what you said initially. Yeah, cordless drill. Mm -hmm. That is true. Here's another one though. These days, and I have the same one. Um, they have all kinds of lithium battery powered drills, and it, I'm not kidding. This is really. It's it's an essential. It's an essential item. Most of you know this already because you have one and you use it all the time. I mean, almost any project you're doing, you're going to be using this. I got a pretty good deal. Are you okay? Something just dropped. I don't know what it was. Uh, oh, don't worry yeah, about it. Something fell. Yeah, we'll be all right. Um, where I got the, the drill and the impact driver together for a Father's Day special. Ooh, nice. Father's Day's coming up. So right. I'm guessing the deal will be coming around because I see it every year. Right. It's like one ninety nine for both. You get two batteries. And it's DeWalt. And and that's for the DeWalt, right. So here's the deal when it comes to power, these power drills and power tools in general that are battery operated. Okay. The thing that you are investing in is not actually the tool. Because even if you go down to like a Ryobi or a, a cheaper brand, you know, insert cheap brand. Or even X, brand, Milwaukee. Or Milwaukee. Right. Um what you're actually buying is the battery. The difference between the actual tool, meaning, uh, you know, how strong or how good is the electric motor in this tool, they're pretty comparable. Now, there is some differences. Sure. Okay. The higher end ones are going to have more drilling power, but not substantially more. Not, not where like, oh, this one costs twice as much. Does it have twice as much power? No. However, the battery will be twice as good. So, so it's, all, it's also like the, the like cell phone ecosystems, right? Like Apple. Like if you're gonna go with an Apple, right? If you're gonna go with an uh, iPhone, you might as well go with you know. If you're gonna use an iPad, you know, or a tablet, go with the iPad. If you're gonna use a MacBook or you know, a laptop, go with the MacBook, right? Because the ecosystem is very nice. Whenever yeah. you start using the same chargers, when you start using the same uh, cloud system within that, it works well. Same yeah. with like DeWalt. If you're gonna use, you're gonna start using tools and you're gonna use a, a DeWalt power drill, start using, use all your tools as DeWalt because it's just a benefit whenever you can use the same chargers, the same batteries for multiple things um, and they all right. work together well. Yeah. So. If you're just getting started, you want to pick a brand, probably. Right. That way, because otherwise you end up with all these chargers mounted on your garage wall. Right, which are annoying. And right. you have to have all these batteries. And the batteries are more expensive than the tool. Right. And so the thing about... Um, and this is advice for Tom. I'm just going to give Tom a shout out real quick. Okay. Because he's a 20-year-old guy who sent us an email uh, last week who's saying like he appreciates... Oh, I thought you were talking about MySpace guy. Oh no, not 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 our friend Tom. Okay. Like I haven't met. I wonder how he's doing. I'm, oh, he's doing fine. He's, I wonder if he's got a Facebook page. He's retired. Page. I'll bet he's got a Facebook page. He's retired. You think he's it's the same picture? Uh, yes, definitely. No doubt. Uh, but Tom, 
I don't want to give him his last name. I didn't get permission, but he he, wrote, he sent us an email who said he's a 20-year-old. He's going to try Lefroy 10 as his first drink when he turns 21. That'll be a bold choice. If you enjoy it, you will enjoy basically any other whiskey, I would imagine, at that point. But he said he enjoyed it even though— I think if you like Lefroy 10 the first time you try it, you're a better you're a, like a, a stouter man than I am. <laughs> yeah. But he said he enjoyed listening to what we had to say as cuz we're older. We're, we're like older guys now. Uh you know, we're like 10 years older know, than him, know. you know, 13 years older than him. And so he enjoys our perspective because hopefully, you know, if his vocation calls to him to be a father and, and a you know, husband and father, he enjoys it. So Tom, this is advice is for you as you're getting new tools you're starting you know you're starting your life you're getting out of college you're trying to figure out oh i'm a homeowner now i'm gonna have to have tools yeah. what should i go with this advice is for you what if you don't go with dewalt that's fine i personally in uh appreciate dewalt that's what i, I went too. with i did too but whatever you use go with the same brand yeah. because i think rigid is also another good brand the home depot brand okay they have they have really good warranties on all of their stuff. I just bought a rigid power drill, cord, plug-in power drill. But anyway, the DeWalt uses Samsung batteries, which they're known, they make the best rechargeable batteries. So that's why I like them. They've got all the great tools. Hilti is also an Hilti awesome. Hilti is good. A little and, they're, bit, and they're here in Tulsa. A little bit more expensive, but it's worth the more, investment. Right. Yeah, tools are definitely one of those things you want to invest in, and if you do, otherwise, the, the one you got will go bad, and you'll end up having to buy a better one anyway. Right. So, so when we get back, we're going to talk about leisure. Now that we we finished talking about work, we can go to leisure. It is right and just. We work so that we can leisure. Right. Question: When you go over a little bit, I'll be fine. No, no, but do you want me to double click it still? Is that is that going to? Yeah. Be overlap yeah but it's fine because it's still recording it's just lapping over and so all i'll do is just barely move it over and we'll be good you weren't a fan of the whiskey Juan. Juan is not a fan of the whiskey did you hear that did kent, you hear the kent we're smoking uh what, what, where'd, you, where'd it go? Oh, the Marlin Flake. Did you hear? Did you guys hear the uh, air filters kick on? They just kicked on, so I don't know if, if you guys can hear that or not. We had to... Margo, we're not sitting six feet apart, no. We're not doing that. That would be very awkward. It's actually 12 feet. It's, it's, uh... See, look, I can't reach him. Yeah, like... You know how, like, the camera puts on 10 pounds? Yeah. It also puts on six feet of distance. No, it subtracts it. Oh, yeah. It subtracts. It takes the distance between people and adds it to their width or gotcha. something. Yeah. Gotcha. That's why my shoulders look like they're 10 feet wide. I didn't realize they even did. Yeah. Check the cameras, bro. <laughs> Check the cameras. Check the cameras. <laughs> All right. I look like oh, Goliath. Oh, man. Okay. You do not look like Goliath. Well, if you did, I would. Makes you Dave. Yeah. If, yeah if, you, <laughs> makes you, if you're Goliath, that makes me Dave. I'm not that intimidated. Greensburg, Indiana, tuning in. Welcome, Matthew. All right, let's 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 keep going. Gosh, like Cheech and Chong did over Let there. us sally forth. We should come up with a better name than Sally for the man show. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. Sitting in phase two renovations of the studio. You want to see me blow a, a ship? No. Like a smoke ring ship? No. No I Gandalf. I can do it. I can do it. It's fine. But I can only do it when no one's watching. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing about my gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a gift in humility. Because <laughs> it's so awesome, but you can't see it. You have to trust me. Okay, so um, crazy week, crazy. Yeah. So okay, so we are going to talk about this episode, a pandemic that has been, and I think you know what I'm talking about. It has been sweeping the world. It has been causing the death of un who we don't even really know how many people have died because of because of this pandemic. 
Uh, sickness is spreading throughout the world. And of course, I'm referring to mortal sin. You thought I was talking about the stupid coronavirus, but I'm not. Talking about mortal sin, I was recently in adoration thinking about how drastic all the measures are that we're willing to take to avoid the coronavirus, which is like a flu, okay? It's the flu. It's not, it's, some people are dying, sure. Um, I don't want to diminish that, but in large measure, they're not. People are not. It's not like SARS or even some of the other like swine flu that have been in the past, okay? Every life is precious. That's not what I'm saying, you know, but you're going to get a lot of I'm, emails. Yeah, for don't this. email me. Okay. But the point is that we're, we are lock barricading ourselves inside of our house. Mm -hmm. Like here in Tulsa, we have, we've had five reported cases and four of those, that was like weeks ago. Those people are better now. So we, we have one person maybe in Tulsa officially who has the coronavirus out of a million. And we are shutting down the restaurants because of it. You understand? Um, I understand it's a bad, it's a, this is a bad sickness and we need to make, take steps to prevent its spread. Okay. I get that. And but, we need to be obedient to our bishops. I'm mean, correct. I, like, I'm tired. What oh, I'm, I'm saying, sorry, what I'm saying is though, look at all the stuff we are willing to do to prevent the coronavirus, mm -hmm. but our, but we're not willing to take even a 10th of these measures to prevent mortal sin in our own households. Right. Do you, do you consider the people that you associate with when it comes to the plague of sin? Which yeah, is that's why far I barely, more deadly. That's why I barely invite you over anymore. Well, maybe, why, then why do you invite me at all? Because I'm trying to convert you. Well, you're doing a very poor, a poor job. Piss poor, really. Well, okay. I'm I blame you. I'm I blame trying. you. I'm trying. I just want to get that out there because people are freaking out. But just like, I want to reflect on our lives here because mortal sin is so much worse. It would be better that all of my children died from the coronavirus than for me to commit a single mortal sin. I don't want my children to die. Okay. But it would be better that they died than for me to commit even one mortal sin. That is how severe and how terrible sin is, okay? So as we are in our homes, working from home, barric you, know, you know, like in our home bunkers, we should take some time to reflect on the things that actually matter even more in our lives, I think, okay? And so- And you have time. And now that you have time, and so I, I think a good way to do that is by, you know, where do you start in assessing your whole life? When it, with regards to sin, the what, beginning. Yeah, the the beginning is is a good always place a to good, start. Yeah, good, good place to start. Yeah. Um, so June second, nineteen eighty six. Mm -hmm. I I enter into Adam the world. Adam Minahan was born. I was born. Mm -hmm. And so I start there. Mm -hmm. And the 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 world moaned. <laughs> <laughs> but here I am. Mm -hmm. But it rejoiced on the day of your baptism, so that was good. Good. So June twenty second. I want to talk about Sundays today. Okay. Let's just, we're just going to pick a day and Sundays are, uh, the most important day of the week. That's, that's correct. And they're the beginning of the week. Correct. So that fits your rule of starting at the beginning. Okay. Uh, because this is, I, I want to talk about this. This is something that I am recently making a change on. This is a kind of like new rules in the Niles house about the way we are going to be living on Sunday. Okay. I'm interested. And so I wanted to have a, and I wanted, is it going to affect me? Maybe. Man, I don't like when things affect yeah. me. When external things affect mm, me. That is not convenient for yeah, me. I don't so. like that. I'm going to have to ask you to change that. Yeah. <laughs> for me. Okay. Uh, we're doing Exodus 90 right now. Correct. And recently one of the readings was talking about observance of the Sabbath. You know, and now as Christians, our Sabbath is Sunday. Okay, the, the, the day of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, and so they were making the point in this reflection how the most of the world honors the secular, what they called the secular Sabbath, the Friday night and Saturday, where everybody goes out and parties Friday and Saturday night, and then end, you end up getting all your chores done on Sunday. Okay, and how that's really not as Christians what we're called to do. 
And I, um, I realized like, yeah, I kind of do that sometimes. You know, I, I do things on Saturday because I can sleep in on Sunday. You sleep in on Sunday? Well, kind of. I don't get up at 5.30. I get up at 5.30 on Mondays. I'm not getting up at 5.30. I'm getting up at like 7 o'clock. Sleeping in till 7 is sleeping in for me. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I was... That's like... Right, I realized I was doing that. I was, you know, doing things, staying up late on Saturday... Because I could get a little bit more sleep Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to, I realized this is not good because what is that teaching my children? You know, a lot of the things that I think about is always in context of what does this say to my children? How does this behavior of mine, what message am I giving to them? Right. And I realized, yes, I want to give them this. Uh, I want to pass on to them the beauty of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what the implications are for us on Sunday. Cause every Sunday is a solemnity. Mm-hmm. Every single Sunday is the solemnity of Easter mm-hmm. in the entire year. Right. Sunday is Easter. Hey, Juan, you can't do that. No. So I was thinking no, about now, now we're going to go off, off Facebook. Okay, keep going, Dave. Sorry. I was just thinking about what does this mean? How can we, how can I do this in our house? And so I realized I need to be the leader here and I need to change the way that I am behaving on Sunday. And so um, the consequences, practical, practical applications for me were a couple things. My Saturdays had to change so that my Sundays could change. Mm-hmm. My Fridays and Saturdays had to be more I have to be more intentional those days so that I can be intentional on Sunday meaning that for na- for now for me Saturday is is a work day every day mm-hmm. I get up on Saturday and I start working so that on Sunday you can rest I don't have to do any of those things right even if it means like doing some meal preparation of course I don't want to be I'm not pharisaic pharisaical about it on Sunday pharisaical pharisaical I think okay I think it's pharisaical. Sure. Whatever it is. I'll go with you. I'm not a Pharisee about it. Um, you know, like some things you're going to do on Sunday, I, you know, I'm not worried about how far I'm carrying my mat, for instance, mm-hmm. on a Sunday. But when it comes to things that I would consider to be work, chores, I'm trying to get them done on Saturday mm-hmm. so that on Sunday I can be present with my children. Mm-hmm. So if it's something that would be taking me away from family time, I'm trying to get it done on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Every now and then I understand necessity will um, require me to do something on Sunday. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, so when it comes to mowing the yard, when it comes to... See, that was the thing. It's like for me... I, I very s- often mowed on Sunday. Sundays was yeah. like the day that I, I mowed the yard. I got the yard done. Mm-hmm. And I, I would justify it as well by saying, well, I'm letting... I'm doing it with my with my boys. You know, the boys are outside. Yeah. So I'm kind of still doing family things. But... And there's something to that. I think there's something to that. But you can still do that together as a family on Saturday. So I I, one day I was listening to Catholic radio and I... No kidding. Yeah. Believe it or not. I love Catholic radio. I I do too. Big fan. I don't remember the show I was listening to. It could have been Al Cresta. Um, But a priest was on talking about an experience he had as a seminarian where he went and stayed with a family for a summer who lived who had a farm and so they had a a large family and you know like you know they had many kids and in this family they all worked very very hard on saturday they had to kind of get saturday's chores and sunday's chores done but then as a family they all rested on sunday and he said that that experience for him over that summer was so incredible and so formative for him to where he came to really understand what it means to celebrate the Lord's day so much that you let it affect your whole life. Right. You know that we let this be the thing that changes the way we behave, that changes who we interact with uh, in, 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 in what way so that the children know Sunday is different that so that the children know that this is not a day 
for other things because what do we do on Sunday? We feast. It's about Sunday is a day of celebration. Okay. Um, Father John Grant here at the Diocese of Tulsa in Eastern Oklahoma. Uh, he was recently talking to me and he said that it's more important to feast on Sunday than it is to fast on Friday. Interesting because you want to, you have to fast in order to feast. Right. So we'll talk about this after the break because I can tell you why. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be interesting to know. Yeah. Yeah. Because there isn't really a feast without a fast. Correct. I agree. But we'll talk about it. Okay. On the other side of the break. We're on the Lord's team. The winning side. So raise your glass. Hey Juan, can you keep Cubase up so that way we know, like how much? What time... happened? Well, he 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 clicked on. I was trying to get to the comment because I can only see like four here, so I clicked on this. And, it and what it did, it, it started playing. Well, click on it now, and you can mute it. Right there, there you go. Yeah. There, that's what I'm trying to do. But they closed it. But I would rather see Cubase than this because I have Facebook pulled up on my phone right here, so I, I don't need it. I don't need to see that. Okay. But Cubase, I I do need to see because I'd like to know how much time we have left. Okay. Word. We have we have new systems in place, so we're trying to figure it all out. Everything is new. Everything is new. Christ makes all things new, you know. He said that. To our blessed mother. He actually didn't say that. That was in, a, in the passion. In the in the movie he says that. Right. To our blessed mother, but that's actually not in the the Is passion it, narrative in the gospels. That was a editor's take? Uh huh. Yeah, they're kidding. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's not actually if you read you know, John's passion. Uh huh. It's not in there. It's not in anywhere in the Gospels? No, he does say, I make all things new in the Gospel. Right. I, but he doesn't say it as he's carrying the cross to got, Our Lady. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. It's a good editor's note. It is a good editor's note. I mean, like, it's perfect it, timing. It's, it is a really beautiful thing to add to the movie, especially in that place, right after he's fallen. He, you know, he and his, his human weakness has fallen, and he says, Mother, I make all things new, and he rises, you know, like... He's just been flogged. That's He's just had the crown of thorns. Right. They're beating him. He's carrying this incredibly heavy cross. He's fallen three times, and even still, he makes all things new. Hey, you guys want to up your game on uh, Good Friday, which we're going to have to because we have to figure out ways to, to do things outside of the church. Watch the Passion of the Christ on Friday night while praying the yeah. rosary. Yeah, we always do that. The Sorrowful. Uh, the Sorrowful Mystery. Yeah, the Sorrowful, course, obviously. Me. It's yeah. Friday. You're, you're not you're gonna be praying the, the, the mysteries glorious mysteries or the joyful mysteries, but yeah. clarification is good. Yeah, so I pray the glorious mysteries one Friday a year, and that's in the octave of Easter. So what we do we've we've talked about this on the show before, but it was a long time ago, at least a year ago. So while we're in between breaks, this would be a good conversation to have really quick for those who are listening. Yeah. Uh so what we do uh, what I do We need an ashtray. I'm, do you have an ashtray? I, well, mine broke. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so what, what we do as a family on Good Friday is we watch The Passion of the Christ. Actually, it's just me and my wife after the kids go down because The Passion of the Christ is not something suitable for th my age of kids. But so my wife and I watch The Passion, and we pray the rosary. And so what we do is we, as we watch The Passion, and the, he goes through each mystery of the rosary, we watch that section of the mystery, like so for the agony in the garden in the very beginning, we watch the agony in the garden, and then as in the movie it, it ceases, the agony in the garden stops, we'll stop, we'll pause the movie and pray the agony in the garden. And because you just watch it, the mental images are right. there, and you're being able to understand, you know, Christ's suffering, at least for uh, at least mm -hmm. for me, who struggle a lot of times in meditation anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, especially like the scourging and the crowning of thorns and the carrying of the cross. I mean, every, we everything do the same makes, thing. makes it. Except we don't pause it as the scourging is taking place. That's when we pray that mystery. So like as See, we I, watch I, the movie. I think it'd be distracting for me. No, because I, it's like, what? It, it works. You can yeah. do it either way. The thing is, you actually can pray the mystery much faster than the video takes place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
but yeah, I do the same thing. And that movie has totally changed my meditations on the rosary ever since mm-hmm. I saw the passion, because now whenever I meditate on, uh, the agony in the garden, the visual that I'm receiving is really from that movie, mm-hmm. um, because it was so well done mm-hmm. and it, it, it's, it's given me, you know, now I have these images in my head to ponder and I just love them. Like that movie is just, it is so beautiful. Even though the reality is probably worse. The reality was worse. You're right. I'm sure. But I wasn't there, but that, you know, like, so now I, I, I think it, or the scourging from that movie, like mm. that's, that tends to be the images I get in my head when I try to, when I try to put myself at the scene, that movie has given me material men you know like mental images now to right. to use as i put myself there same to here. help flesh out what it might have looked like same here but let us go let us continue on last segment as kansas the philosopher kansas said carry, carry on, on my wayward, my wayward son. son which is appropriate for the drink for today being from kansas city it all comes together you don't, you don't even know where it begins the whole thing sometimes. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan. We're talking about how to live a good Sunday today. Right before the break, I I said that Father John Grant explained to me how it's more important to feast on Sunday than it is to fast on Friday. And this is not to say that we shouldn't. It's not important to fast on Friday. The, the church actually requires us to. Uh, well, it requires us to abstain from meat abstain, on Friday. Not fast. Fast, abstain, good yeah, clarification. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Sorry. yeah that's okay. Um, but the point is that the reality of heaven is more important than the reality of sin. That the reality of heaven and God's presence and hmm. our ultimate destination supersedes the current our current state of sin in this life. And so that's why feasting, I mean, just from an eschatological metaphysical standpoint Dude, feasting you're, you're so smart feasting well this is explained to me this is not you know these are not these are not uh right observations that were conceived in my own mind um and actually father sean o'brien my brother-in-law was the one who mentioned this to me hmm. that so feasting on sunday is of a higher importance than fasting on friday we should fast on friday okay we should stay well yeah, yeah, uh, but in, in Lent, it's a good... We should fast, okay? Right. There should be a fast leading up to the feast. Listen, your irascible appetites need to be they tempered. Need, they need to be beaten into submission. Right. So, um, and, and, and in fact, I would say that you can't r- truly feast the right way if you haven't fasted. You know, because if, if all you eat is chocolate all the time, when you eat chocolate, it's just, meh, you know, whatever. But if you haven't had chocolate in a year, now when you try it, it, it just blows your mind, you know? Mm-hmm. So you can actually enjoy the good things in life by first fasting from them. Mm-hmm. That's why there's so much beauty in the, the, the calendar, the church calendar throughout the year. But anyway, today we're talking about how to, how to feast well. So I'm trying to implement these rules and there are some growing pains because I've really just started this just over the last few weeks. And how is it, you know, and a lot of it does come down to what am I doing on Friday and Saturday so that I can do things the right way on Saturday or on Sunday. So in, in many ways there is kind of a fast I'm fasting from resting on Saturday. There is no rest Saturday. I was just telling my wife today, look, Saturday is going to be a work day. Like I might work till 11 o'clock on Saturdays. That might be what has to happen so that on Sunday I can rest. Mm-hmm. And Sunday I'm just going to be, I'm just going to sit in the living room with the, with the, you know, I'm just going to be present. Nothing will distract me from the family, from prayer, 
you know, uh, I want to be pri principally present to the family mm -hmm. because a lot of the things, a lot of the duties of being the head of a household, being a father involve, um, fixing things around the house. You know, if you own a house, you know what I'm talking about. Things are always broken, broken in disrepair. Right. Um, and I'm remodeling my bathroom right now, which, which is, you, which is, yeah, which is, takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what I want to do because I want to, like I said, I want to teach them. I want them to know at the very fabric of their experience of life hmm. that Sunday is a different day. All the other days are for working, but not Sunday. You know, Sunday is a day where we're all together, where we, where we feast, where we get to do special things. You know what I mean? Right. You know, where there, maybe we don't get so many, you know, maybe we don't get to eat treats as much, you know, throughout the week, but on Sunday, is treat Sunday we get to. Why? Because Christ rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And w there is no single greater event in history than his resurrection. Let I want that to be the single event that informs our, our whole week. That, I think, is really what we are called to do as Christians. And so... I don't, I, I, I'm not saying these things like, this is what you should do. This is just what I'm doing right now. And, you know, over the next year, over the next couple of months, I might say, oh, I might this find something work. different. Yeah. Right. So or, I, not that this wouldn't work, but this would be better. Yeah. And every, you know, for some households, depending on the age of, I have young children. So, you know, that works right now. Like if we get to have, you know, caramel popcorn or something in the middle of the day, that's a big deal for the girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as your as your children get older, it's different stuff maybe that would really speak to them about what makes Sunday important. So um, I really just wanted to have this conversation with you so that people can think about, you know, what might be a good idea for them in their life. I, I, for me right now, this is this is where I am. Um, and it really makes I think it will make a big difference. I was uh, recently talking to a friend of mine who. um he, he doesn't have any children yet. So he, he was telling me what they do, he and his wife, is that they just intentionally don't make plans on Sunday so that when they go to church, they're available if something, if somebody, you know, so Invites now them over if they're, because or... with, they don't have kids, they can easily go over to someone's house. Right. You know, whereas if you do have children, it's like, well, that makes it kind of harder because nap times and Right. All, all, all this stuff. So that's what they do. And so that they now are available on Sunday to be with the community. And I thought that was very beautiful, too. Mm -hmm. OK, so I want to ask you right now. Sundays are looking a lot different for Catholics than what normal is, because yeah, we're yeah. not going to to to, to mass, right. you know, um, at least at the church. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I'm do, like, what I did today, this is the first day that uh, the first weekend that mass was officially publicly canceled. Mass isn't ever canceled but publicly it was canceled. What we did today was we still got up. We still dressed appropriately. Like we were going to mass, like mm. Luke still, in fact, Luke is getting to the point. I'm so proud of this. So proud of this dude. He, uh, woke up and dressed himself completely bow tie and all in the, in the, in, in the suit and fixed his own hair ready for mass. Oh, and I was like, buddy. And he, he came down he You're came, getting an extra pancake came, at breakfast. Yeah, he came down uh, before we, like, he woke up on his own and did all of that, fixed his hair, everything, and then came down and was like, I'm ready for mass, holy mass. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, that's awesome. And so we still dress up we, because mass is still, regardless of the location that we're in, is still mm -hmm. the most important thing that as a family we do every single week. Right. Uh, I, I would love to go to, you know, daily mass, daily mass is now streamed live, you know, in a lot of places. So that's also in, yeah. because you're home. It's certainly available every day on the internet. Right. And so, but, uh, you know, for, sun, for Sunday, we still, this is still the most important thing that we did. So we, uh, respond, we participated in a mass the, the best we could, you know, we, we responded when responses were, were, uh, appropriate. And we still, we even had a song at the end and after mass, you mm -hmm. know, and like we made a spiritual communion. And so all these things that we're doing is still, we're still making Sunday Sunday. Yeah. Cause it still is Sunday. It still is, but it's just looking right. different right now. And here's the thing is like, 
Christ knows, obviously, what's going on. And so he's, like, by obeying our bishops mm -hmm. and doing, like, whether or not you agree or disagree, the, the masses should be open or not to the public. It right. doesn't matter. Because the, the bishops have said, this is, not what's, this is what's happening. Yeah. So as lady, we're going to obey. And uh, the bishops, because there's a hierarchy in our church, which is a beautiful thing. And so we're obeying what the bishops say, because right. it's not contrary yeah. to, you know, the, the grace of obedience. It, it's hard to overstate, right? The graces received in obedience. And so, and if if your if your if your priest or whoever if they say no, you may not receive communion by obediently submitting yourself to their authority. You are receiving grace, un an untold amount of grace. And that's what I was about to say, is that, that Christ is giving us the grace to persevere. Christ is obviously knows that knows our heart better than our, ourselves. He yeah. knows that we want to participate in Mass. He knows that we yearn for the Eucharist. He knows that we desire to, ha to receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He knows this. Uh, and so be because of this wild time, he's going to give us grace. Christ is not... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he does not have to conform to the sacraments. Right. You know, he's not bound by the sacraments. We right. are. We are, but he is. He not. is not. Right. So he can still give us the grace that we need mm -hmm. to persevere, to ob obey our bishops, and to and, and to uh, you know, still be a part of the body of Christ. Yeah. I think that there's something very uh, powerful about, you know, even though it's live streamed, you know, it's you know coming to you digitally. What's it's, there is a distance, okay? There's a distance when you're actually at Mass. You know, you might be 30 feet away, okay? So now you're maybe a couple miles away. But that distance for Christ means nothing. In fact, it so, means so little that we still genuflected in the uh, angle of the, where the tabernacle is to our parish in yeah. reverence inside of our home. Right, so, and it's not like you're watching a video. What you're seeing is, is a live thing that's happening in real time, you know? So there's truly something different about that. I think that's beautiful, and I, I I'm we, so we glad to hear from, you say that. We got that from Father uh, Donald Calloway. He he gave us that uh, idea. So, yeah, but dressing up like this is no Sunday is no less just because it's live streamed. The mass is still as important, right? You know, so we should dress ourselves the same. We should maintain those same um, uh, schedule, the same, uh, same ritual, yeah, ritual, um, and so it's so important that we maintain the sacredness of Sunday because it was made sacred by Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sunday is sacred. Mm -hmm. Whether you want it to be, whether you try to make it sacred or not, it is. Okay. We are observing the sacredness of Sunday. Okay. Because it was Christ who sanctified the day and participating through the mystical body of Christ. Word. Which is like mind blowing. Yeah. So, we had a little bit of Gully Town double barrel aged single malt whiskey. We talked about the power drill and or hand drill. And the cordless drill. Cordless drill. And we, we uh, talked about Sunday. Dave, well done, my friend. We're on the Lord's team. Cheers. The winning side. So raise your glass. And cheers to Jesus. What do you think, Juan? Do you, did you hate it? No, it's good. It's good. Juan is Juan. Which which camera am and I on? It's not. I'm on. It's this not one. smoky in here. It's not. Too, well, we weren't smoking constantly. No. Unlike cigars. You're right. That's the thing. That is a good point. That cigar is just Constant rolling smoke. and rolling, and it's a thick. Think about how much. Okay, like. How much more tobacco you smoke in a cigar? Right. I mean, because well, you, if you load up the tobacco, if you load a pipe. It's like smoking a cigar that's only that big. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about that. Because that's essentially the same size as a cigar. You know, it's about that big around. So you're smoking a cigar that's only that big for every bowl. I've never considered that. that I haven't either. A, to, a cigar is just a massive amount more of tobacco. And the cigar wrapper, the, the tobacco leaf, is always a thing that smells more than the actual tobacco right. itself right but, but just want. the sheer volume alone is a huge factor let's see i'm a, we're at this camera so juan always at the end of our episodes he's he either like gives us this that was a good episode or like, yeah he, su yeah. he sums it up for us and he's honest and he's honest he's like sometimes he's like yeah he's like i think that you could it was have okay i think you could have sucked less yeah <laughs> or like you know you guys went too long on this so but that's okay.
Right. So I liked it. I was going to say, yeah, Santiago is still going to stunt him from misbehaving in front of the, of the mask. Santi, <laughs> Santi got a spanking during, uh, during mass live stream because he was misbehaving. Yeah, it's like, but it's still real. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, like, yeah, I, the I would too. Realities are still realities. Reality. Yeah, yeah, totally. In fact, uh, I mean, our boys, uh, Jude started to kind of act up a little bit. And I, I, I do the same thing, whether I, you know, in mass or at, you know, at my house, when I do, when I snap, I also snap snapping works so well. Like it gets their I think, attention really like, quick. Also, I can snap louder than Pamela. Yeah, I can too. I mean, that that's a loud snap. So there's just something about like having a commanding present, you know, like as you, men, we yeah, can, we like, can, and they know I oh, can say Elizabeth. And she, yeah, but the snap, the snap doesn't bring as much attention. Right. It, if you've trained your kids that when I snap, that means, you know, something's going on. I don't and have to even say your name. Everybody has a different, yeah, there's but, like a different sound. Right. Like, but the snap, my dad used got the like snap. a real like punchy snap. Sound my dad right uses, now. used the snap. And man, when he did, I was like, Ooh. right. You know, like it was like one of those. Ooh. Cause it's like, Ooh, yep. Okay. I heard you. Don't. I'll be better, please. Right. And so uh, I had a moment of weakness. Right. And so I do the same thing, and it actually works really great because all of your kids tune in, but regardless of who is the one that's not right. doing it, <laughs> they all snap to attention. They all they all get, get to it. Attention. You see what I did there? Yeah. 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 The, the sound you made. Got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it, all of them register like, ooh, I, I need a I need to correct myself. Yeah. So. I like that one. I'm glad you did because uh, it's still important. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a that's a good that's a good call. I like that. All right. Anything else? No. I have one more. Th nah, never mind. I won't. I won't say it. What? Say it. Well, you have to say it now. Have to say it. I feel I'll, like you have to. I'll wait till next week. Okay. All right. And if you're gonna be like that. Did you say yo tambien? No, cliffhanger. Oh, 